the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Just let me know when you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Okay, excellent. Hi everyone, uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks so much uh, for having us. Sorry, we we're a little bit late. There was a slight mix up on time. Sorry about that, Tarek. Uh, so Joe and I, my colleague from ACTED are going to be speaking to you today about a research, a research cycle that we just uh, scaled out, uh, profiling um, informal settlements and host communities to inform the mobile CCCM out of camp response in Northeast Nigeria. So my colleague Joe is from ACTED, who works more on the programmatic side, and I'm from REACH um, and work more on the um, uh, AME monitoring research side. Um, so just, I'm, I think you guys have already heard a little bit today from my other IMPACT colleagues, uh, REACH colleagues who might be already familiar with the organization. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, know or are new, um, uh, REACH's predominant primary goal is uh, assessment, information, management, and analysis support, which we then feed back to the humanitarian uh, community. We do humanitarian situation monitoring um, and carry out crisis-wide multi-sectoral assessments um, and rapid assessments in the sudden onset of crises. Uh, to, so to give you the idea of the scale, um, last year we carried out, uh, we downloaded, sorry, we published over 150,000 information pro uh, products and launched over 80 reports um, uh, and over 1,300 fact sheets. Um, so it, back in, I'll speak briefly about the inception of the research cycle. Back in April, we reached out to the sectors uh, to get a better understanding of the uh, information gaps that existed prior to the entry of COVID-19 um, coming to the Northeast. Um, and CCCM identified significant information gaps related to out-of-camp populations, predominantly in informal settlements. Um, so they asked us to carry out a um, needs assessment uh, of populations residing in host communities and informal sites, um, and then specifically tie the research and indicators to uh, COVID-19 and how COVID-19 had shifted the socioeconomic conditions of these communities. Um, so just to give you a little bit of context, the uh, crisis in Northeast Nigeria is now about 10 years old. Um, according to the HNO in 2019, about 8 million people in need of life-saving assistance um, and 2 million uh, are displaced. About 60% of those IDPs are in, are in host communities. Um, informal settlements are a subcategory of host communities believed to be um, especially dense um, and marginalized from basic services. So the research objectives were to then um, identify specific multi-sectoral challenges and needs of uh, residents of host communities, um, specifically those residing in um, informal settlements, uh, and then tie this back to COVID-19 uh, and rank the settlements on their COVID-19 vulnerability um, and likelihood that individuals were residing in informal settlements. Um, one of the immediate challenges faced was coming up with a definition of informal settlements. And to do this, we relied on UN habitat literature um, and then literature from other smaller NGOs. Um, uh, but we generally focused on three common characteristics. The first is a lack of tenure and a high risk of eviction. The second is marginalization um, and isolation from infrastructure and basic services. And then the third is uh, shelter types, um, specifically housing being non-compliant with building regulations or being unplanned or unsafe. Um, and then these five, these, these characteristics manifest in five general deprivations. Um, two are specifically related to access to basic services, specifically water and sanitation. The third is overcrowding. Uh, the fourth is structural durability. And the fifth is, uh, again, tenure. Um, and then recent definitions have expanded to include things like contamination, social risk, including crime, um, et cetera. Um, so I'll speak briefly about our, our methodology. Um, we used the most recent data set from IOM DTM to um, select our uh, host communities. 
Uh, we took all host communities with at least 50 displaced households um, and then selected our LGAs based on the volume of IDPs as well as their programmatic relevance to our implementing partners. Um, in our key informant identification, uh, we consulted a network of traditional leaders that are um, uh, present in Northeast Nigeria, including um, one traditional leader, one female community leader, and one displaced representative from uh, each community. So that's three total key informants per community with almost 600 key informants interviewed total. Um, we conducted, because of COVID-19, we conducted interviews remotely uh, by phone from a call center in my degree. Um, and then we verified key informants area of knowledge by using uh, the community name, but then also alternative community names that are not uh, used as much by the humanitarian community, but are more locally known. Um, and then our, for our analysis, we aggregated the findings to the settlement level um, to determine consensus between key informants. And then when there was no consensus, we um, reported the response of the traditional ruler. Um, and when both of those conditions were not met, we uh, reported the indicator as, as not available. So to give you guys some, uh, like an idea of the types of indicators and, and, and reporting that we did. Um, um, one of our key focuses was to try to determine how the socioeconomic conditions of the communities had shifted since the entry of COVID-19 in the Northeast. Uh, so we touched on COVID-19 specific facilities and infrastructure like information centers and isolation centers, uh, hand-washing facilities, um, and then we tailored the indicators um, specifically to um, COVID-19 COVID situations. So instead of asking whether or not schools were present or what percent of children are enrolled in or attending school, um, we asked about whether or not alternative education options were available for out-of-school children. Um, and then we, um, again, tailored the indicators um, so instead of asking about general protection issues, we asked about how protection issues were perceived to have shifted since COVID-19 entered uh, the Bay States. Um, and yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, um, we plugged key indicators into uh, two indices. One was used to rank the settlements on their respective and relative COVID-19 vulnerabilities. And then the second was on the likelihood that informal sites and settlements were present within the host community. So for the former of those, uh, we used indicators such as uh, time to collect water, um, available hand-washing facilities, information flow, um, et cetera. And then for informal settlements, we used indicators um, such as most common shelter type, uh, residents access to tenure, um, et cetera. And then the final analysis was the overall risk of harmful impacts due to COVID-19, which is just these two scores in conjunction. I will, sorry for rushing through that, uh, but I do wanna give my colleague from ACTED time to speak on how this research was used in site selection for the CCCM out of camp response. So I'll hand it over to my colleague, Joe Schumacher. Thank you guys. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Shumaka, I'm the CCCM project officer for Acted Nigeria, and I will just very briefly touch on how we've used some of this data for our current out of camp um, intervention in northeast, northeast Nigeria. So, just to very quickly give you an overview, we're still in the middle of our site selection for an intervention in my degree in Jerry which is an urban setting where we're targeting a minimum of 5,500 IDPs in out of come settings through a mobile CCCM response, um, which will facilitate various activities such as information management, referral mechanisms to other partners, as well as implementing a community information center to rapidly um, dis disseminate information relating to COVID-19 prevention, current displacement trends, or government resettlement plans, which is a current um, issue here in the Northeast. 
Now, the way we've started this process is by first looking at kind of the LGA level, i.e. my degree in Jerry itself, and then narrowing it down to more of the ward level. So the blue areas you see shaded in here is Bellori 1 and Bellori 2, which we found interesting. Um, so what you can see here is some of our key findings when we looked at the ward levels, such as a high prevalence of IDPs residing in self-settled sites, um, a relatively high number of settlements reporting misinformation on COVID-19, a lack of community information centers or public health information centers, which ties into our mobile CCCM um, strategy. Um, furthermore, a uh, lack of concrete hand washing facilities for a lot of these settlements, as well as an overwhelming consensus that food security is a paramount concern for residents. So once we kind of identified those uh, ward levels, we then had to identify actual sites. And as you can see in some of those areas, it's uh, incredibly difficult to select some sites because they're so clustered together. And this is where the reach data has been really helpful in terms of identifying vulnerabilities um, across those sites. So this is actually one of the sites that we've pre-selected and where we're currently in the process um, of soon um, of implementing our activities. So uh, it's called Bellori site. We have an estimated IDP population of 1,349 individuals. And here you can see on the right, some of the findings that were particularly relevant to us, such as fear of eviction, which will tie into some of our HLP modalities, um, reportedly also poor access to water and wash, facil uh, wash uh, facilities in general, as well as a higher likelihood of hosting residents in informal settlements, which again ties into some of the um, in intervention um, activities that we will be doing, as well as um, a higher overall risk of negative secondary impacts due to COVID-19. And this is what really helped us well to differentiate some, some, of, those, uh, some of those sites. So just, um, I know it's a very brief overview, but I just wanted to share with you how we've managed to use some of this data through in our site selection process and how, um, how it served us. So if you have, I know we, we don't have that much time left, but if, if you have any questions, we'll be, um, we'll be happy to take them. Yeah, so we didn't leave too much time for, for questions. Next time we'll choose the 30 minute slot, but go ahead, um, I think we have two minutes. One minute, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay, then if, the, if, there's, if there's no question, then please feel free to uh, reach out to us bilaterally. We'll be happy to talk about this more and, um, and answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Um, so participants that have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, colleagues uh, will be happy to respond to them. So um, 